I just thought it'd be nice. I mean, I certainly am pretty well versed in autism, but I thought you're tired of hearing from me, and it, and here a fresh and very very well, uh, well very knowledgeable person to talk to you about autism. So without further ado, Teresa Carter. Mm. Thank you. Okay, you guys, um, I will tell you a little bit more about me, and then we'll kind of jump into autism. Kristen asked me to give just kind of a brief introduction, uh, and really there are five courses in the certificate and six in the minor, so you're getting like 45 minutes, so obviously not going to cover everything we possibly could, but anyway, I'll try to tell you a little bit about it. Um, just a brief introduction into how I came to UVU. I grew up in a place that looks like that, which is why I don't like winter, as I've been mentioning before. I did not appreciate it. I just want you to know that. I now appreciate it. So where is that? Um, California. Oh, okay. so I grew up in Southern Cal. Um, and then moved to Arizona where I was uh, working as the director of clinical something or other that we called it. Anyway, uh, for an autism agency there. So I was helping put together their preschools and doing a lot of things like that. My background is as a speech pathologist. So my undergrad and graduate, first graduate degrees in speech and hearing sciences. So I knew I wanted to work with kids with autism from the very beginning. I became a speech pathologist because of a cute little guy I saw one day. Uh, his speech therapist came in. She had a bag of toys on her back. She literally looked like Santa. She came in. She dropped a bag of toys onto the floor and started playing with this kid who was a two-year-old that I had absolutely fallen in love with. And I thought, okay, someone can pay me for the rest of my life to play with kids on the floor with toys. <laughs> so that was great. I thought that was kind of the BL end all and thought that would be the perfect solution. Um, so I had to go to school for a long time to do that. And then decided to go to Arizona where I was offered a job, like I said, as the clinical director, which was great fun, but I was also frustrated time and time again going, gosh, we do not know enough about how to help kids with autism. And since that had been my area of focus, I kept wanting to know more and more and more. So when a professor from ASU came to me and said, why don't you come get your doctorate with me? I laughed. And I was just like, that's really funny, but, you know, I have two kids growing up and, you know, I'm raising my kids and working full time. That's enough. And then six months later, I called her on the phone, and I said, were you serious? And she said, yeah, just go take the GRE, which I had not taken, um, and you can come, and I'll be your mentor. I had no idea what a nice offer that actually was and how great that actually was at the time. Uh, so later on, I learned that that's actually pretty rare, and so I was excited. Um, but you have to remember, too, that getting your PhD is a little bit crazy. I highly recommend it. It's totally amazing and cool, but it's really hard. I guess it's supposed to be. Uh, so anyway, but I focused again on speech and hearing science and on autism the entire time I was at ASU. Um, during that time, and kind of some before that, I actually wrote, I've written a couple of books, three, on autism. The first one was written because I have a brother who has Asperger's. And when I was going through some of my undergraduate work is when we started to figure that out. My parents had gotten divorced, and so lots of doctors were blaming it on lots of different things and saying, oh, it's just because you got a divorce, and oh, he's oppositional defiant, no, he has attention deficit, and blah, 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 blah. Turns out he has Asperger's and then a host of other things that we've figured out um, as he's gotten a little bit older uh, with some personality disorders and various things. But that he's inspired me in a lot of other ways in the work that I do. So graduated and got a job offer and took the job up in Washington at Washington State University, but I was on their health sciences campus. Some of you might know that Washington State University is in Pullman. The health sciences campus is actually in Spokane. Um, if you want to talk about winter, go to Spokane. <laughs> <laughs> I was in for the shock of my life, having grown up in California, then gone to Arizona, and then I went up to Spokane. <laughs> I thought like I had fallen off the planet. It was bizarre. It was totally bizarre. I worked with the nicest people, but they all had lived in like Nebraska and Wisconsin and Minnesota and thought Spokane winters were mild. <laughs> <laughs> so that taught me something right there. Anyway, so last summer my husband was offered a job here, and we all of a sudden in this crazy whirlwind decided to relocate to Utah. And I was not planning on leaving my job. Um, I was going to commute originally and just fly back up uh, every now and then, and then talked with various people at UVU and couldn't believe it, but they were rushing forward with this whole concept of an autism studies program. Uh, and anyway, so I stayed for a year, and then they officially hired me on and said, we want you to put the whole program together. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but let me tell you a little bit about autism first and see if I can pique your interest a little bit. How many of you have heard about autism? I'm assuming. Okay, just checking. I can't really say that anymore. There's a lot of myths out there about autism. There's a lot of misinformation about autism. So I thought we'd start today. I have a dryer somewhere. Um, and I thought I'd let you guys just tell me a couple of things you've heard. Um, about autism. So what are some of the, they may be facts, they may be myths, but we'll, we'll put a couple, a couple of them up here. So shout some out. Go for it. I don't know how to quite say it, but they might be slow in one area, but they're like, they're 
chef can like work in one another area. Okay, so we have sometimes we call that splinter skills. Okay. Where we have some skills that show up as amazing and some skills that show up as like, whoa, what happened there? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't know that term. It's okay. <laughs> I think a lot of people blame <clears throat> the parents. Ah. Well, parents get a lot of the blame. Okay, blame the parents. All right, what's another myth fact? Oh, I've moved too far. <laughs> Go for it. That they can grow out of it. Ah. You get heard some good ones. Oh. All right, what else? I've heard that vaccines can sometimes cause them. I didn't think I could be up here too long without writing that down. <laughs> okay. Did you see that new study that they did? I see lots of them. Which the one? The University of Utah. Uh huh. Where they said that um, BMI in pregnancy can cause autism or something like that. <laughs> Not cause, but is correlated, correlated right? with yeah. a higher incidence. Mm hmm. Um. Yeah, there's a lot of research coming out with correlated information. And, and I don't know what the wording would be, what the, if there's a term for it, but they um, they don't well, they don't like change, and they're very um, sensory. sensory. Yeah. Okay, so rigid and don't like change. Yes. <laughs> and. Sensory seekers, yeah. maybe. Some are sensory avoiders, too. But well, yeah, they, we'll put that up I there. guess it's, they're high. I mean, they're, they're sensitive to a lot of things, to noise, to, yep. to fabric. I mean, just they have high sense. Yep. Okay. Anything else you want to throw up here? It's a really wide spectrum. Oh, yeah. It's a wide range. Can you this down? Absolutely. I guess the obvious would be poor social skills. Yeah, those are some of the core deficits, yeah. All right, any other myths, facts you guys want to throw up here? Repetitive behavior. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll talk a little bit, and then we'll come back through and do some fact-finding and myth-busting. How about that? Okay, so when it comes to autism... We have some statistics these days. When I started in this field 20 years ago, I actually had a professor tell me, why would you want to focus on autism? You'll have maybe one or two clients your entire career. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> About three years ago, she was actually sitting in the audience at a uh, keynote presentation I was giving in California. <laughs> it was really justice. It was good. <laughs> I have to say, that was fun. Okay, so we actually have, now the estimate is closer to 2 million cases of autism in the United States. A new case is diagnosed every 20 minutes. How long are you guys in class this morning? <laughs> okay, so how many new families in that amount of time? Five, almost six families. We'll get the news that their lives have changed forever. Their expectations are totally going to be different. They're going to feel like somebody stepped on their head and kicked them in the stomach. And that's all going to happen while you guys sit in class. Hmm. Think about how many are diagnosed in a day. Okay, and that's a national statistics. That's not even a Utah statistic. One in 50 children are currently being diagnosed. That number is somewhat controversial because those were parent reports, meaning they called parents on the phone and said, does your child have a diagnosis of autism? Um, another number that the state, or, or that the country looks at is one in 88 right now. Looks like we're heading to higher numbers. Utah has one in 47. It's projected to be heading to one in 38. Jeez. That means one of every 12 boys in the state of Utah is being diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. One in 12, oh. okay? Um, clearly, fastest growing developmental disability, it trumps like uh, pediatric AIDS, diabetes, and cancer, uh, pediatric cancer um, altogether. $126 billion annually in the United States to support individuals with autism, $2.3 million to care for an individual with autism over the course of their lifespan. How many of you have $2.3 million just sitting aside in savings just in case? I'm a professor, so yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, make, 